Hello and good afternoon friends. Welcome to the CEC Edusit live lecture. Dear friends, as you know that in our previous sessions, we talked about uh, carboxylic acid derivatives. Dear friends, in this session also, we are going to talk on this very topic or I would say in fact, uh, we are going to take more deep insight into this very topic. Uh, we are going to start from where we left in the previous uh, session on the carboxylic acid derivatives. And uh, for this, we have again with us in our studios, Dr. K.K. Aroda. As you know that Dr. K.K. Aroda is Associate Professor in Department of Chemistry, Zakir Hussain, Delhi College, University of Delhi. So dear friends, let, let's take advantages from his experiences and let's try to understand more about the carboxylic acids derivatives. So without wasting any time, I would like to welcome our guest, Dr. K.K. Aroda. Dr. Aroda, welcome to the Edisit Lecture. <coughs> Hello friends, uh, in continuation of our topic, that is carboxylic acid derivatives. Uh, we will discuss briefly what we discussed in our last session and then today mainly we will take up their physical properties, chemical reactions and uses of all these acid derivatives which are acid chlorides, acid amides, acid anhydrides and esters. And then we will summarize what we have discussed in these two sessions. We discussed that this functional group which is COOH, it represents a carboxylic acid. And when OH of this carboxylic acid is replaced by some other groups, we get other classes of compounds which are called acid derivatives. Say when this OH is substituted by Cl, we call those compounds as acid chlorides or acyl chlorides. When this OH is substituted by NH2, that is a water is lost from the molecule of ammonia and this hydroxyl we get the group of compounds which are called amides. Then when alcohol reacts here, we get the compounds which are called esters and when a water molecule is lost between these two carboxylic acids themselves, we get a series of compounds called acid anhydrides. In our previous session, we discussed about their nomenclature, common system as well as IUPAC system and also we discussed their important methods of preparation. We also discussed that which of these groups can easily be displaced by the other and based on that certain methods of preparation were interrelated. Now, when we talk about their physical properties, let us take physical state. We find that acid chlorides are mostly colorless they are generally liquids and they fume in air due to their easy hydrolysis. That is the molecules get hydrolyzed by moisture in air that we will talk about in chemical reactions. Then lower acid anhydrides are also liquids. Lower means uh, the anhydrides which are formed from the acids up to 3 or 4 carbon atoms. Then with the exception of formamide which is a liquid all simple amides are solids and most of the esters are liquids with their characteristic fruity smell. Then we talk about their solubility. Acid derivatives are mostly a soluble in organic solvents and they are also miscible with each other. That is acid chlorides are miscible with esters and some anhydrides also dissolve in esters and so on. Then acyl chlorides and acid anhydrides, they cannot be said to dissolve in water because they react with water and they get hydrolyzed. So, we do not talk about the solubility of acid chlorides and acid anhydrides because when we mix them with water, the hydrolysis may be slow or fast depending upon uh, the uh, react, uh, reactant that we are taking, the substance that we are taking and sometimes they react with water very violently also that is very fast reaction occurs. This reaction occurs like that, uh, this water acts as a nucleophile and attacks this carbon and this Cl is ultimately displaced. We will talk about uh, this reaction in detail when we are talking about their chemical reactions. Then solubility of amides, the lower members of amide series are soluble in water like formamide, acetamide, they are soluble and with the borderline solubility occurring in those that have 5 or 6 carbon atoms. That is amides of uh, pantanoic acid has very little solubility in water. Then the solubility of these amides is due to hydrogen bond formation with water molecules. They form hydrogen bond like this. 
that the CO group of the amide can form the hydrogen bond uh, with the uh, this hydrogen uh, by chance this is shown wrongly the hydrogen of this water and here also this hydrogen of this amide uh, show forms a hydrogen bond with the oxygen. Then ester molecules can engage in hydrogen bonding with water molecules. So, esters of low molar mass are also somewhat soluble in water like uh, methyl estate, ethyl estate they have some solubility in water. And the borderline solubility occurs in those uh, molecules that have 3 to 5 carbon atoms. Then as far as their boiling point is concerned acid chlorides are polar molecules but cannot form hydrogen bonding. So, their boiling points are higher than those of alkanes of the corresponding molecular mass, but less than those of corresponding alcohols, because alcohols can form intermolecular hydrogen bonding and they have higher boiling points. Ester molecules are polar, but again they have no hydrogen bond, hydrogen bonding formation. Uh, so, they also have relatively lower boiling point than corresponding alcohols or even corresponding carboxylic acids. The amides generally have high boiling points and melting points, it is due to the intermolecular hydrogen bonding bond formation. The H which is attached to nitrogen in one of the amide can form hydrogen bond with the oxygen of the carbonyl of amide and due to this type of intermolecular hydrogen bonding they get a stronger packing and they have higher melting points and higher boiling points generally. Now, this chart shows the replaceability of different groups which we had discussed in our previous session and there we discussed that out of these four acid derivatives which can be easily replaced and we have found that chlorine in case of acid chlorides can be easily displaced by other groups like by NH2 or by some alcohol or by some acids. So, acid chlorides can be converted into amides, esters and anhydride and they can be hydrolyzed into carboxylic acids. So, all these reactions constitute the chemical reactions for acid chlorides. But as far as amides are there, we found that amides are most stable and they cannot be converted back into either acid chloride or esters or anhydrides. They can only be hydrolyzed to carboxylic acids. So, this way we had discussed this chart while discussing this nucleophilic acyl substitution reaction and that showed the stability of these derivatives. This also makes the basis for their chemical reactions. Now, let us take the chemical reactions of these compounds one by one. The acid chlorides, the acid chlorides undergo nucleophilic substitution when a nucleophile attacks this carbon which has got a slight positive charge. Then ultimately this halogen is displaced and nucleophile attaches to this carbon and that is why we call these reactions as nucleophilic acyl substitution because this group that has been finally attached to the nucleophile is the acyl group. Hydrolysis, acid chlorides can be hydrolyzed by water, here water acts as a nucleophile, attacks this carbon, pair of electron goes to oxygen and when this pair of electron comes back, it forms back the carbon oxygen double bond, this chloride ion is lost. Since originally this water has attacked here, this oxygen has positive charge, when this chloride is leaving, it takes away one hydrogen from this water and we get carboxylic acid and HCl. Now, it is not always necessary that chloride ion leaving this molecule will take the hydrogen ion from the same molecule, it can be from some other molecules, but ultimately one H plus is to be lost and we get carboxylic acid. We call this reaction as hydrolysis, hydro for water and lysis mean cleavage. So, what has actually happened? This molecule has been cleaved with the help of water, that is why the reaction is named as hydrolysis. Then acid chlorides can be converted into esters on reaction with alcohols or phenols. Basically, here the reaction involves the loss of HCl molecule and this oxygen is basically acting as a nucleophile. This attacks here the carbon with a slight positive charge and in order to uh, facilitate the reaction, we need some base, so base so that it can take away the HCl from this reaction mixture 
and generally pyridine or other tertiary amines are used for this purpose and the products which are formed are called esters. As reaction can be shown with the phenols also, phenols also react with acid chloride in presence of pyridine or other tertiary amines to give this ester. Say this is uh, acetyl chloride and this is phenol. The compound which is formed will be named as phenyl ethanoate because the acid part is coming from this side. So, you first name this part that is phenyl and this is now the portion from ethanoic acid. So, it is called phenyl ethanoate or commonly it will be called as phenyl acetate. Esters can also be obtained when our acid chloride is aromatic and it is treated with some other alcohol such as ethanol reacts with benzoyl chloride and we get ethyl benzoate. The reaction is same a loss of HCl molecule occurs and in all these reactions whether it is alcohol or phenol it is oxygen with its lone pair of electron is acting as a nucleophile. We can have even uh, some other cyclic carboxylic acid derivatives like uh, cyclopentane carbonyl chloride. This reacts with uh, say 2 propanol obviously, this oxygen will act as a nucleophile will attack here and Cl will be lost. So, there will be linkage between this carbon of the carbonyl and this oxygen and we ultimately get 2 propyl cyclopentane carboxylate. So, all sorts of esters can be formed by reaction with different acid chlorides and different alcohols are phenols. Conversion into amides. Amides are obtained from acid chloride when ammonia is the nucleophile. This ammonium molecule attacks here, this pair of electron goes to oxygen and when this electron pair comes back, this Cl is lost and obviously taking away one hydrogen. So, we will get amides. The mechanism for all these nucleophilic substitution will remain same. It is any molecule which is acting as a nucleophile will attack on this carbon which is electron deficient. So, we have seen here when it was hydrolysis water was a nucleophile, when it is a ester formation some alcohol or phenol is acting as a nucleophile and when it is a amide formation it is ammonia acting as a nucleophile. So, basically a nucleophile will attack here and ultimately it will displace Cl. So, we get simple amides when any acid chloride is treated with ammonia. When this acid chloride is treated with some other amine, now also again this amine can act as a nucleophile, it will attack on the carbon, halogen will be displaced, but now we will not get the simple amides, we will get substituted amides. The alkyl group which was attached to this ammonia that is the um, part of the amine will now be substituted over this nitrogen and we had discussed earlier that these type of amides are called secondary amides and they will be named as an alkyl and then named as alkanamide. Such as acetyl chloride when it reacts with methyl amine we will get n methyl acetamide or n methyl ethanamide because if H is here in place of this methyl this is acetamide or ethanamide and one H is now replaced by this methyl group. So, we will write this methyl after the capital letter N. So, it is called as N methyl estamide or N methyl ethanamide. Then acid chlorides can also be used for the preparation of acid anhydrides. These acid anhydrides obviously are to be formed on reaction with carboxylic acids. As I said earlier that anhydrides are the compounds which are formed by the loss of a water molecule between two carboxylic acids. Now, here what is happening? We are taking one carboxylic acid and one acid chloride. Acid chloride is such a molecule in which o of OH of the acid has already been displaced by Cl. So, what we actually need to do here when reaction is being carried out with an acid chloride, we need to remove one molecule of H and Cl. So, one molecule of HCl is to be removed and we will get anhydride and here also reaction occurs in the same way. This oxygen of the carboxylic acid is acting as a nucleophile, it attacks here, 
initially this pair of electron goes to oxygen and then when this electron pair comes back this C L is lost taking away one hydrogen from here and we ultimately get anhydride. In this method we can get anhydrides which may be symmetrical or mixed anhydride both. If this R and R dash are same we will have a symmetrical anhydride and if they are different then we will get a unsymmetrical or mixed anhydride in this case. Now, this is another example where one aromatic acid has been taken and this is an aliphatic acid chloride. They also react in the same way obviously, since a molecule of HCl is to be removed reaction is facilitated by the presence of a base like pyridine and here again this oxygen is acting as a nucleophile from this benzoic acid and we get acetic benzoic anhydride. This is a mixed anhydride, this is a part from benzoic acid and this is a part from acetic acid. So, it is named as acetic benzoic anhydride. Then there is another modification of this method that instead of uh, taking the carboxylic acid as such, we may take the sodium salt of the acid. So, one acid is taken as acid chloride and second acid is taken as its sodium salt when they are mixed they react and a molecule of NaCl is precipitated out and anhydride is formed. So, initially when here in this case we are using an acid we need to remove this H and Cl from here a molecule of HCl is to be removed. So, this reaction requires the presence of some base here Cl is to be removed from here and Na is to be removed. So, a molecule of NaCl a salt is to be removed which is easier. So, anhydrides can be obtained in a better way when we take one acid chloride and one acid as sodium salt reaction becomes convenient. And these acid chlorides can be reduced into aldehydes and this is an important name reaction which is called Rosenman reduction. This reaction basically involves the catalytic hydrogenation, but this catalyst palladium here is poisoned by some barium sulphide uh, sorry barium sulphate. Because if there is no barium sulphate this C double bond O can also be reduced. We do not want to reduce this C double bond O. So, we poison the catalyst so that it is reactivity is reduced in presence of hydrogen palladium and barium sulphate this C L is displaced by H and C O remains intact. So, these acid chlorides are ultimately converted into aldehydes. Sometimes along with palladium this is spread over carbon also. So, in some cases in uh, carbon is also used here such as this benzoyl chloride when it is subjected to this Rosenman reduction then we get benzaldehyde because only change that occurs is C L is displaced by H and the product formed is benzaldehyde. Then aldehydes can be reduced by another reagent which is a slightly better reagent because in the earlier case which I discussed in Rosenman reduction we have to use hydrogen which is a gas and re reaction requires high pressure. So, that hydrogen remains there in the reaction mixture. Now, this is another catalyst which is you can say a modified catalyst of lithium aluminum hydride. You know that lithium aluminum hydride L i A L H 4 actually reduces this C double bond O also, but here this is lithium tri tertiary butoxy aluminum hydride means to this aluminum three molecules of tertiary butanol are attached. It is a salt with that and again with lithium and one hydrogen. This is a specific reagent and it reduces only the C L it is displaced by H and we get aldehydes and this is a good method for the preparation of aldehydes from acid chlorides such as for example, this isobutyl chloride when it is treated with lithium tri tertiary butoxy aluminum hydride and it is reduced to isobutyl aldehyde 
C L is displaced by this H, there is no other change in the molecule, molecule remains as such. Then acid chlorides also react with Grignard reagent. You know Grignard reagents are the compounds which are alkyl magnesium halides. This such as we have taken here methyl magnesium bromide, it reacts with benzoyl chloride. Initially this methyl part which has a delta negative charge acts as a nucleophile attacks here and it adds on to this and pair of electron goes there and when this pair of electron comes back the C L is lost. So, what will happen? We will get a ketone, it is here, the C 6 H 5 remains as such, C double bond O and here one methyl has come from this Grignard reagent. And ketones react with another molecule of Grignard reagent ultimately uh, leading to the formation of tertiary alcohols. So, acid chlorides can be converted into alcohols on reaction with 2 moles of Grignard reagent and the alkyl group of Grignard reagent will attach to this carbon and the alcohol that we will finally get will be a tertiary alcohol. Then the acid chlorides can also be treated with sodium azide where the C L is simply replaced by azide group and we get alkyl azides, uh, this C L is displaced by this N 3 group on reaction with sodium azide. We can also prepare ketones with the help of acid chlorides. Acid chlorides they react with dialkyl cadmium and again this is a very simple reaction, it is simple exchange of one alkyl group from the dialkyl cadmium with the chlorine from acid chloride. So, acid chloride reacts with it, this alkyl group goes here and C L goes with cadmium. So, cadmium chloride is lost and we get ketones. Dialkyl cadmium themselves can be obtained from Grignard reagent. This Grignard reagents they react with cadmium chloride forming dialkyl cadmium and uh, this magnesium salt is lost ultimately. Uh, so, dialkyl cadmiums are produced in this way. Now, you see the difference. If the acid chlorides are directly treated with the Grignard reagent, we get here tertiary alcohols as we have seen in the previous slide. And if the acid chlorides are treated with dialkyl cadmium which themselves are obtained from Grignard reagent, we end up with ketones. So, acid chlorides can be used for the preparation of aldehydes, ketones are tertiary alcohols. Then they can be converted into ketones by using a different reagents also which is dialkyl copper lithium. Here also the same reaction occurs, it is a simple exchange of this C L by the alkyl group, alkyl group goes here and C L goes with this copper lithium and we ultimately get the ketones. Ketones can also be obtained from acid chloride using an important reaction which is friedel craft acylation. In this friedel craft acylation, we get generally aliphatic aromatic ketones such as this benzene when it reacts with any acid chloride, this reaction occurs in presence of anhydrous aluminum chloride, this RCO group is substituted on the benzene ring this is an electrophilic aromatic substitution for this aromatic compound and we have obtained a ketone basically which has on one side this benzene ring and on other side it is this alkyl group. For example, when benzene is treated with benzoyl chloride, so this CO will attach here on the benzene and we will end up with benzophenone. So, we can get even those ketones where both the parts are aromatic, but this reaction is most often used for the preparation of those ketones where there is one aliphatic group and one aromatic group. Then let us briefly discuss about the uses of acid chlorides. Acid chlorides are useful intermediates for making other acid derivatives as we have discussed and we will see quickly that on hydrolysis they are converted into acids on reaction with alcohols they are converted into esters, on reaction with ammonia or other amines they are converted into different type of amides and on reaction with some other carboxylic acids or sodium salts of carboxylic acids they are converted into acid anhydrides. So, they can be used as a starting material for the preparation of all types of acid derivatives. Then they are also used in organic synthesis to introduce acyl group into many other compounds. The compounds which have OH group or NH2 group and we need to introduce acyl group, these acid chlorides are used. 
Acetyl group is also used as a protecting group in organic synthesis. Protecting means suppose there is an oxygen uh, present in the form of hydroxyl and we want to carry out a reaction on that molecule and we do not want to uh, change that hydroxyl group. So, means we want to protect that hydroxyl group. So, what we do? We convert that hydroxyl into some acyl derivative, carry out the reaction on the other part and then finally, we remove this protecting group that is acyl group and original hydroxyl group can be retained. Similarly, this acylation can also be used to change the reactivity of a molecule. Let us take an example for this. Say this is aniline. You know that aniline reacts with bromine to give 2, 4, 6 tribromoaniline. This reaction is very fast because aniline is an activating group as well as arthropara directing group and we end up with this 2, 4, 6 tribromoaniline. Suppose we want to get a derivative of aniline where we want only 1 bromo. So, what we can do? This aniline is treated with acetyl chloride and is converted into this compound which is uh, and either we can call it as an phenyl ethanamide or we can also call it as an acetyl aniline because we are taking this as a reactant. So, let us name it like this that acetylation of the aniline is carried out and commonly this compound is named as estenolite. Now, when this is treated with bromine, we get mixture of two compounds arthobromoestenolite and parabromoestenolite where artho product is less, para product is obtained as a major product. Since we are not discussing the detail of this substitution reaction, I will not go into the details why this is minor, why this is major, but what I am talking about that this NH2 group which is strongly activating due to the presence of this acetyl now, its activating power has been reduced because this acetyl also withdraws electron partly towards this side and we get mono bromo derivatives. These can be separated and then later on we can hydrolyze it and get back the amino group. So, we can prepare arthobromoaniline or parabromoaniline from the aniline via this method in which we have reduced the activity of this NH2. Then let us take up reactions of amide. Amide as we discussed is RCUNH2 and can also be hydrolyzed in alkaline medium generally where this hydroxide and they act as a nucleophile and we get ultimately carboxylic acid finally on acidification. This hydrolysis of amides can also be acid catalyzed also. In that case what happens when it is acid catalyzed that is we are not having an hydroxide ion then initially a protonation may occur and after this protonation this carbon will have enhanced positive charge where a weak nucleophile water can attack and ultimately displace the ammonia. So, mechanism will be slightly different because uh, there no strong nucleophile is present, but we can carry out the hydrolysis of amides in alkaline medium as well as in acidic medium. Then we can carry out even the diazotization of amides, but on diazotization again we get the carboxylic acid. We know that when diazotization of primary amines is carried out the desonium salts which are formed are not very stable and this the desonium group which is formed is displaced by OH immediately and we get alcohols. The same thing happens here. This NH2 gets diazotized, but the desonium group which is formed is not stable and is displaced by OH and we ultimately end up with carboxylic acids. So, carboxylic acids can be obtained from amides by hydrolysis as well as by diazotization. Then reduction of amides. This amide group CO group can be reduced using lithium aluminum hydride or it can also be reduced by sodium in ethanol and this CO group will be ultimately reduced to CH2 group and we get primary amines. If it is a simple amide, it will end up into primary amine with the same number of carbon atoms as there are. Say this is propanamide, we will get propanamine in this case. But if it is an substituted amide, say it is N-methyl ethanamide, 
Now, what will happen? This CO will be reduced into CH2, and the amine that we will get it will be a secondary amine because this nitrogen will have one alkyl group which was present earlier, and this amide group is also converted into the corresponding alkyl group. So, here we will get N methyl ethanamine or ethyl methyl amine, a secondary amine will be obtained by the reduction of N methyl ethanamide. Then there is a another method and is an important reaction for converting amides into primary amines called Hoffman bromamide reaction or it is also known as Hoffman's bromamide degradation. In this case, the amines that we get they are obtained after the loss of one carbon atom. So, the difference between this Hoffman bromide reaction and the amine that we obtained by the direct reduction of amides is that in direct reduction we will get the amine with the same number of carbon atoms as they are in amide. But in case of Hoffman bromide reaction we will get the amine with one carbon less than those present in starting amide that is the basic difference between these two reaction. This bromide reaction involves the treatment of amide with bromine in presence of sodium hydroxide or we can also use NaOBr sodium hypobromide as the reagent and you see here we will get the amine which has one carbon less this CO is lost in the reaction in the form of carbon dioxide. Let us discuss the mechanism of this reaction quickly. Actually what happens in this reaction that initially this amide when in presence of NaOH one H is lost and anion is formed and that reacts with bromine to give this N bromo derivative and we call this as bromoamide means is that amide which has one bromo group attached to it. Then base again takes away one hydrogen we get the anion here this pair of electron shifts here it goes to the oxygen this is the resonating structure and when this electron pair comes here it comes back to nitrogen may lose the bromine as Br minus. Right. So, when it loses this Br minus what has actually happened this alkyl group with its pair of electron has shifted to this nitrogen right this is an alkyl shift here is a rearrangement occurring. So, as I was saying that in bromamide reaction uh, when this Br minus is lost actually this alkyl group migrates to this nitrogen and we get this isocyanate where this nitrogen which was originally tied to this carbon has now shifted to this nitrogen right? and we get this isocyanate. This isocyanate get hydrolyzed into the carbamic acid a water molecule is added across this C double bond N OH cause here and hydrogen goes to nitrogen and this carbamic acid are unstable they lose a water a molecule of carbon dioxide and they get converted into primary amine. So, this is the mechanism for the conversion of amides into primary amines where this carbon is ultimately lost as carbon dioxide. The next reaction is dehydration amides can themselves also lose a molecule of water oxygen from here and then taking two hydrogen from the neighboring nitrogen. For that we need heating with a strong dehydrating agent like P 2 O 5 and we get alkyl cyanides. Amides are less reactive, so they resist hydrolysis and provide structural rigidity such as in proteins and polyamide like nylon and this rigidity also forms the basis for the uses of amides. As far as the structure of protein is concerned proteins you know they are the long chains of different amino acids and when these amino acids they link with each other they form amide bonds which in case of proteins we call also peptide bonds. Say this is one amino acid portion this is NH2 then carbon with some substituent and then this is COH. This COH has lost its OH and this is the NH2 group of the next amino acid. So, they have lost water here and form this amide bond. Similarly, the carboxyl of this amino acid has reacted with the amino of the next amino acid 
and forming this amide bond. Here with the next amino acid, this is the amide bond. So, chain of protein is formed by various amide bonds which are formed by the reaction between the amino group of one amino acid and carboxyl group of another amino acid. And these bonds are quite strong that is why proteins are rigid molecules. Nylon which are synthetically produced also has a similar type of amide bonds. And lower amides like dimethyl formamide and dimethyl acetamide are used in paints removers and as a solvent for plastics, resins and different gums. Then these amides are also used in synthesis of many dyes, adhesives, paper and textile and also in sewage treatments. Many amides they possess insect repellent properties. Many drugs such as penicillin are also amides. The structure of penicillin is this. It has got two amide bonds, one in this ring and another here where amino group is acylated. So, there are two amide bonds in this penicillin. The various penicillin they differ only in this structure R. Then reactions of acid anhydrides and as I said hydrolysis is the reaction for all acid derivatives. So, anhydrides can also be easily hydrolyzed. These acid anhydrides are very reactive. They can be hydrolyzed even with simple water also but in presence of small amount of alkali reaction becomes very fast and they are very quickly hydrolyzed to carboxylic acids. And they react with ammonia also and ammonia acts as a nucleophile will attack on one of the carbonyl group and another part will be displaced as acid. Since here the molecule is cleaved with the help of ammonia we call this reaction as ammonolysis and this leads to the formation of one molecule of amine and another molecule of carboxylic acid. Then alcohols are phenols, they react with acid anhydrides to give their esters and the reaction occurs in the same way that this oxygen acting as a nucleophile attacks on this slightly positively charged carbon of anhydride and ultimately esters are produced. This is the phenol molecule, phenols as I said also act as a nucleophile can react with any anhydride such as this is phen simple phenol. So, we will be giving us a phenyl group and this is ethanoic anhydride ultimately giving us this ethanoate group or acetate group and this compound is named as phenyl ethanoate. One example related to this is the preparation of very important medicine or drug called aspirin. Aspirin is nothing but the acetyl derivative of salicylic acid. This is salicylic acid which is orthohydroxy benzoic acid. It is this hydroxyl group which acts as a nucleophile reacts with acetic anhydride in presence of few drops of sulfuric acid and we get aspirin. So, aspirin is basically an acetyl derivative of salicylic acid. Anhydrides are used in organic synthesis to introduce acyl group into other compounds as we did with case of uh, acid chlorides. And succinic and malic anhydrides are used for the synthesis of various resins and thallic anhydride is used for the manufacture of many dyes also. They are also used in pharmaceuticals, agrochemicals and photographic chemicals. Then finally, let us take up the reactions of esters. Esters also undergo this nucleophilic substitution reaction where any nucleophile will attack here. Now, this X will be obviously an alcoholic part which will be lost as alkoxide ion and nucleophile attaches to this acyl group. In case of acid halide this is halogen, in case of amides this is ammonia and in case of anhydrides it is another acid molecule. When we study the hydrolysis this esters are hydrolyzed in presence of alkali the hydroxide and acts as a nucleophile attacks here and this alcohol part is lost we get this alcohol and acids. But this hydrolysis of ester has been widely studied. It has been found that this hydrolysis can be carried out in presence of acid as well as in base. 
So, this reaction can be acid catalyzed as well as base catalyzed. Second thing, it may involve the cleavage of acyl oxygen bond or alkyl oxygen bond. This acyl oxygen and alkyl oxygen means this is an ester. If this bond is cleaved, which is next to this acyl group that we generally say is cleaved in most of the acid derivatives, we call it as acyl cleavage. And if by chance this bond is cleaved in any ester, then we will call it as alkyl cleavage. And in our classification, acyl cleavage we will represent as AC and alkyl cleavage we will represent as AL. So, reaction can be acid catalyzed or base catalyzed, may involve cleavage at this place or this place and then last that reaction may be a unimolecular or a bimolecular. So, it means there are three factors which can come into the hydrolysis of an ester and considering all the three factors, eight possible mechanisms are reported for hydrolysis of ester and these mechanisms have been named like this. The first capital A or capital B represents as acid catalyzed or base catalyzed followed by AC or AL represents the acyl oxygen cleavage or alkyl oxygen cleavage and this one or two represents the unimolecular or bimolecular. So, these eight different mechanisms are there such as AC A 1 means acid catalyzed acyl oxygen unimolecular or B A L 1 means base catalyzed alkyl cleavage unimolecular. So, these are eight different possible mechanism out of which two are very common and two are observed in some special cases, other four are very rare. So, we will take up one by one these mechanisms such as acid catalyzed acyl cleavage bimolecular. This is the most common mechanism that is observed in uh, this acid catalyzed hydrolysis of esters. Here what happens? This is any ester ethyl ethanoate has been taken. When in presence treated with some acid, in presence of acid the protonation occurs, then water acts as a nucleophile it attacks on this carbon which has now delta positive charge pair of electron shifts to this oxygen. Then this water now which was here would have acquired the positive charge because it has used this lone pair of electron acting as a nucleophile loses one H plus. We get this situation now on the carbon there is one OTC 2 H 5 group one OH another OH then a protonation may occur and now this protonation occurs on this ethoxide oxygen and then it is lost as ethanol molecule and ultimately it loses the H plus we get the carboxylic acids. So, these are the steps involved in the acid catalyzed acyl cleavage and this is a bimolecular reaction and all these steps are equilibrium steps. So, reversible reaction is possible if we take water then and uh, this forward direction if we take water and if we remove water constantly from the reaction mixture, then the reversible reaction may also occur that is alcohol and acid would react to form esters. Then base catalyzed acyl cleavage bimolecular. Here the base directly acts as a nucleophile as we have discussed for other nucleophilic substitution reactions the hydroxide and attacks here pair of electron shifts to oxygen and when this pair of electron comes back this ethoxide ion is lost. Now, ethoxide ion is a stronger base than this and it captures one H plus from here actually the products that we get initially are the alcohol and the salt of the acid which on acidification further gets converted into the carboxylic acid. Then acid catalyzed alkyl cleavage unimolecular. Now, this is in some special type of alcohols which have the alcohol part which can form a more stable carbocation such as in this ester which is an ester from a tertiary butyl alcohol. So, it is tertiary butyl acetate. This one protonation initially protonation may occur here and if this bond breaks there is a strong tendency to break because this carbocation that is formed is a stable tertiary carbocation. So, this separates out as a carbocation and we directly get this acid. So, this is a unimolecular reaction 
and involving this alkyl oxygen cleavage. Then there is another base catalyzed alkyl cleavage which is bimolecular. Here when our base is very strong such as methoxide ion and ester is such where this carbon is slightly hindered whereas this alcohol part is a small alcohol and less hindered. In that case now such as this methoxide ion it acts as a nucleophile and instead of attacking here it may attack on this carbon also. So, this bond cleaves and this is separated as ether. So, this reaction is of that type now which we have discussed in case of uh, nucleophilic substitution of alkyl halides also where halide ion leaves and ether is obtained, but here the acid carboxylate anion is being lost, but this is a very specific reaction requires a very strong base or strong nucleophile and the alcohol should be least substituted and this carbon should be sterically hindered. Then ammonolysis of the esters they react with ammonia similarly ammonia acting as a nucleophile attacks here and we get amide and this portion is separated as alcohol. Then aminolysis when in place of ammonia if some other amine is used the amine also acts as a nucleophile we will get substituted amide and alcohol is separated out. Then a reaction in which the alcohol part of the ester gets exchanged we call that reaction as trans esterification when any ester is treated with some other alcohol in presence of acid. So, this alcohol may substitute this if it is more reactive and we get the ester with the different alcohol. Since alcohol part has changed and we have got uh, obtained a new ester we call this reaction as a trans esterification and there is one very important coming up use of this reaction is that these oils and fats you know they are the esters of glycerol. When they are treated with small uh, alcohol like methanol then what happens uh, this bonds are cleaved and this displaces the glycerol molecule and now we get the methyl esters of these long chain carboxylic acids which were earlier present as ester with glycerol in oils or fats and these methyl esters are used as biodiesel and this is a very important reaction in preparing the biodiesel from oils and fats. Then the reduction of esters esters can be reduced by using lithium aluminum hydride where it involves the cleavage of this bond also and we get one this part as alcohol that was earlier coming from the alcohol itself and this part which was coming from acid is also reduced to corresponding alcohol. So, we will mix get the mixture of two alcohols one the alcohol which is already present and other this acid part is reduced such as ethyl benzoate when it is reduced with lithium aluminum hydride we will get from this part this benzyl alcohol and from this part this ethanol. Then there is another important reaction of esters called Claisen condensation. This reaction is given by those esters which have alpha hydrogens such as ethyl acetate this has alpha hydrogen. Alpha hydrogen is a hydrogen attached to the carbon which is next to the carbonyl and this alpha hydrogen in presence of a strong base like sodium ethoxide is abstracted and we initially get anion that attacks the another molecule of ester and we end up here with beta keto esters like simple ethyl acetate gives us ethyl acetoacetate. Then this reaction has wide uses and we can have a crossed Claisen condensation where two different esters are used and if both the esters they have alpha hydrogen then each of them can form anion and react with the other ester molecule. Say ethyl acetate which gives the anion can react with another molecule of ethyl acetate or react with another molecule of ethyl propionate and similarly the anion which is formed from ethyl propionate can react with another molecule of ethyl propionate or can react with ethyl acetate and we end up with the mixture of four different products. So, these are the reactions of esters. Now, finally, uh, the uses of esters. Esters occur naturally in plants and animals and they have sweet fruity smell. 
different esters in combination with other volatile compounds produce the pleasant aroma of fruits. Hence, they are used as a food additives and also in different cosmetics for different aroma. And the actual taste of any fruit as I discussed in my previous session also is the combination of some acid which is present in the fruit, some sweet which is present in the fruit and then the flavor which is present. When all the three things are there, then only we observe the actual taste of any fruit. For example, the esters which are causing the aroma of different fruits, uh, see their structure, they are such simple esters like in pears, it is propyl acetate. This is propyl group and this is acetate. In apples, we have butyl acetate. So, they differ only in the alcohol part. Then in banana, it is isoamyl acetate. Again, the alcohol part is isoamyl, whereas the flavor of oranges is due to octyl acetate. This is octyl alcohol. So, what is the difference in the flavor of all these four different fruits? We find that they are all the esters of acetic acid with different alcohols. Then in pineapple, it is ethyl butyrate and for strawberries, it is methyl transcinamate. This is a cinnamic acid and it is a trans isomer and ester with methanol gives the special flavor to strawberries. Then other uses of esters include that they are used as solvents in lotions, nail polish removers, glues and also in many organic reactions. Then many esters are used as monomers for the preparation of polymers. For example, plexiglass is a polymer of methyl methacrylate and this plexiglass is used for making the bulletproof screens as well as the wind screens of aeroplanes. Then polymers like terylene are also polyesters and they are used for making containers, conveyor belts and waterproof fabric. All the bottles which are used for uh, soft drinks also, we call them as pet bottles that is also a polyester. Then fats and oils are also esters and they are used for production of soaps and some common medicines like aspirin, methyl salicylate, procaine, benzocaine, etc. they are also esters. So, with this we complete our study about the acid derivatives, where we have discussed their structure, nomenclature, their methods for preparation, their physical and chemical properties and their uses. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you so very much, dear friends. If you like this lecture or if you have any feedback regarding this particular lecture, then you can mail us at info.cc at the rate nic.in. We would be meeting again very soon and we would be discussing on a very new topic. Till then, goodbye, take care. Thank you, sir. Thank you so very much.